Good morning, my name is Katie Levinson and this is all the ways you are doing robots wrong. I can't operate a computer, too much hangover. All right, so who am I? I have done four years of competitive robotics, I've done six seasons of coaching, uh, five of them were first year teams and first year teams have extra excitement with retardation. Two years at NASA, you can read, fuck this. Uh, I am currently the director of development at Hacker Dojo, which is kind of being shut down by the city of Mountain View because they are anti-awesome. Um, so uh, if you would care like to help us in reopening our building, we'd really appreciate that. Uh, and I, my phone makes a cha-ching noise whenever you donate at hackerdojo.com slash kickstarter and I will drink when that happens. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, if, and if, I, if I can find more alcohol, I would love to give you a shot too. Um, and then uh, my best qualification is the experience of doing shit wrong. I'm sure as you know all DEF CON speakers are only ex uh, accepted if they are exceptionally qualified. Um, and I, I feel like I've done my homework in this department. Um, speaking of which, uh, this is the trip to Vegas. Um, and uh, this is why, this is a photo of my grandma in, um, in 1937. She was 19 and graduating from Rice uh, for math. And, uh, and she's going to die really soon. So I figured I'd, you know, kind of do a nice thing. She's, yeah. And uh, I got a lot of shit last year for doing a talk in a dress. Um, and so this year I wore a fancier dress. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to take a second to remind this community, the reason I do this is to remind this community what we spent so many years teaching our bosses and our like, you know, feds and all of those people is that it doesn't matter how you dress or do your hair or what you do on the weekends, what matters is you are fucking good at your job. Um, and the rest of it is all, water under the bridge. So uh, that's, that'll be the end of my stupid idealism for the day. Um, if you have a question, come on up and ask it. Uh, I'd like this to be a nice kind of casual light talk. Um, and if we run out of time, I will have to ignore you and then you can hassle me in Q&A. Um, but it, it, we're going to go through a lot of topic really fast and so it'd be easier if you just stop me and ask your question. And uh, there are a lot of bright lights preventing me from seeing that far into the audience, so please feel free to shout. I may regret saying that. All right, outline. Input is hard, output is hard. I fucked up last year and here are some bad ideas. Input is hard. All right, the infrared. Infrared is a, is a type of sensor you use on robots. Um, it works with a laser. Lasers are sick. So basically you send out an infrared signal and it bounces back off the, uh, off the target and comes back and you measure that distance. Um, and pew pew. Um, so it's really bad with mirrors um, because mirrors are reflective and shiny and things don't bounce quite right and you get kind of vague, weird shit. Um, and, uh, and these are the fucking bane of your existence because most cameras have a infrared sensor which determines the focusing length of the camera. And so I can't tell you how many teams I've seen that like, you know, all those little news clips are like, oh it works great when the camera's not rolling. It literally works when the camera's not rolling because the camera is bathing the robot in infrared light. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. <laughs> Bad. Um, this is, uh, this is actually a problem for, uh, for ca uh, normal cameras as well. The solution is yeah! Um, so sunglasses. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, so you can put sunglasses on your robot and it will filter out the infrared light. And that's fucking phenomenal. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's great. Uh, don't do it on your infrared sensor or you're going to detect the back of your glasses. <laughs> um, and the great thing about this is it's not entirely obvious because infrared sensors have a minimum distance and then like past that it's like fuck all. So, um, so it's going to come out as like, oh, you're about 200 meters away and you're like, what, can you not see the wall? What the hell? Like, so, um, read the specs of your infrared sensors and put it in the range that it's supposed to detect. Rocket science, I know, right? Uh, this is an ultrasonic range finder that's being this, uh, this little thing that looks like a, a look, people always identify it as the robot's head. 
Um, basically, noise comes out of one and bounces off the wall and comes back into the other. Um, and this works kind of like sonar. Um, it's pretty sick. This is my friend's robot. He made tons of money on Kickstarter because fuck him. Um, <laughs> it's called Hexy if anyone, they're really cool actually. Um, they're bad with fuzzy things because fuzzy things don't reflect sound quite right. Um, so you can actually put two of these together and then uh, this will detect the mirror things and the ultrasonic rage finder, uh, sorry, and the uh, infrared mechanism will detect the fuzzy things and that's pretty pimp. This is straight vodka. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, DEF CON. Okay. Oh, this is a puppy. Um, so I talk fast and so when we have a new idea, I'm going to show you an adorable picture. Um, because that's a great way to, uh, to transition because I talk too fast we need a break for ideas. All right. So, uh, perception of reality is hard shit. Like, even for humans, it's not that bad to fuck up. And, um, for robots, this is, this is pretty difficult. Um, so, this is our robot, and it's near the wall, and it would like to measure, um, the, how far it is from the wall. So it's always measuring, like, you know, how far am I right now, and then I'll take, like, I'll know that, and then I'll know my velocity. But the thing is, is your sensors aren't perfect. And so, uh, your, your measurement is going to, um, to vary by, you know, uh, you know, a, a couple inches or so, and you're sampling that, you know, kilohertz range, and it looks like you're oscillating at 200 miles per hour, um, away from the wall. Um, so you want to take your, your, your raw sensor measurement with a grain of salt, go to Wikipedia, there's tons of shit on this, um, but just don't take it raw. It's kind of the, 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 the big takeaway message here. Ah, um, so speaking of like fear and loathing in Las Vegas, the walls bend. Um, and, uh, and, and this is actually really kind of trippy the first time you see it. So you're shining a little, a little laser into that corner and the, and the corners are doing one of these things. And, uh, and that's like, whoa. Um, and why does it do that? It's because the little arrows indicate the, um, the, the thing coming in and as you can see it bounces its way down the corner and then comes back which makes the, the end of the corner look farther away. And so you get this like weird wall curvy shit. Um, there are a bunch of ways to fix this. The dumbest one is to assume that all of your walls are square. Um, and that isn't too terrible of an assumption. Um, uh, there have been other tons of ways I've seen people, they look at the ceiling and they like use those little lights, like they know a light is supposed to be every couple ceiling tiles, so they like measure out how the room warps. Um, there are other people who basically do a 360 scan and then they assume like, I know you don't think I'm the whole way around, but I am. So we're going to assume that all these points I found are points and then I have a spring which represents my confidence in that point and then uh, you assume that like the first point equals the last point and you let the springs, it's really actually cool to visualize. Um, um, what is it? Uh, crap. OpenCV. OpenCV has a great library that does this, and you, it's really cool to watch visualization because it's like room, 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 swing, and it like snaps together and actually looks like a room. It's really sick. Um, and yeah, that's awesome. Uh, this is the only movie where Keanu Reeves was like appropriately cast. Uh, <laughs> I fucking love it. Okay. Um, LiDAR is awesome and expensive and I want to fix that second bit because right now the only people who can afford LiDAR are the military and so like derp ass LiDAR is like three grand whereas like they're like people who have developed them privately put them on stupid robots no one wants to buy for like four hundred dollars it's like fuck. Hey! Thank you someone for donating! Um, I will pour you a drink later whoever that is. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, we want to fix that second bit where um, the lidars are really expensive. Uh, I, they can uh, there's there's some really cool um, open source work which could bring them down to like thirty dollars. And if you're interested in making the world more awesome and full of robots, talk to me in Q and A. All right. This is one of those expectations versus reality. So you can see at the top our little green shifting into blue thing is our rangefinder. And you're like, oh look, I'm going to scan the wall and it's going to be fucking awesome as I drive my robot along. Um, and what you're really doing is you're scanning while you're moving and uh, you're actually taking the sampling of the wall in three different places. And um, so they, it looks like your wall is like this. 
Um, and that's a problem. So you can sit still while you scan, you can do math for how fast you're going, you can do lots of things. But the takeaway here is don't use your data raw. Um, there's a little bit of thought that has to go into this. Um, oh, and this makes sad robot. Sad robot is sad. Um, oh, and then you can do this in 3D. What you can do is you can set up a whole array of little dudes um, along the bottom and then you just scan it up and down. I actually met like a, a, a crazy lady at an interview I had. She was in like HR and she was like, yes, these are the yes yeses and the no nos. And it's because these are the, the ones that scan this way are the yes yeses and the ones that scan this way are the no nos. Um, <laughs> So uh, these are used frequently with LIDAR. It's very rare to have a full 3D field LIDAR because it's fucking expensive. Um, and so you can have, you could get a, 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 a good floor level, but the, the scans will come in, will come in, uh, in, and you have to do the math to pull the scan. Hey, thank you, someone. Um, you have to do the scans in 3D. So um, that's how that is. Uh, oh, compasses. Compasses work on magnetic fields. Duh. Um, motors involve rotating magnets. Um, so don't mount your compass next to your motor. Uh, <laughs> that will get very exciting very fast. There are actually a number of, of uh, sensors which are very sensitive to electromagnetic uh, interference. Um, certain variants of gyros, certain variants of accelerometers. Um, so read your data sheet or at least understand what the fuck you're doing. Um, or, you know, if, if something's really not working, just move it away from the motors and test it, just when in doubt. Ah, uh, this is a kitty! Yay, kittens! All right, next item, output is also hard shit. All right, so this is a little kid waving. Robots like to wave too, but it's not because they're happy to see you, it's because they're retarded. Um, <laughs> So, uh, I'm not, anyways, uh, we're just moving right along. Um, so this is, a, uh, the concept here is a PID and P stands for proportion, I stands for integration, D stands for derivative. So the proportion is how close you are to, uh, to your target, to the proportion of that. The integral is you take an integral of like how far away you are and then that's a number. Uh, and then the derivative is, is how fast the distance to your target is changing. Um, and so what you do is you put a, you slap a constant on each of these and then you combine them for, for your target output speed. Um, and sometimes there's a dividing factor here. This is kind of like big O-ish notation, like the scaling of it doesn't matter. The only reasons A, B, and C matter is relative to each other. So you can't make them all 400 and have it be fucking magic. Um, I'm sorry. It's not how science works. Um, so this is a proportional term. Uh, so it goes, this is a horrendous graph. I'm really sorry. I couldn't find a better one. So the green line is the normal, and then the black is if you lower the proportional term, and then the red is if you raise the proportional term. And you can see that this actually, it doesn't, it doesn't, and you, and then the, the graphs represent like how close it is to the blue line. So over time you can see this actually levels out pretty quickly to its target, but it doesn't rise particularly fast. Um, and when you could, it is, hey, thank you. Uh, it doesn't rise particularly fast. So, um, like, compare it to like integral, which rises much faster as uh, as 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 the uh, as the term increases. So it rises slower. Um, sorry, it rises faster because red is more. God, this is an awful fucking. No, it rises faster. I can read. Um, so, uh, so it rises much faster with the integral term, but like it's going to continue to do like the itty bitty waves for longer. Um, and then this is the derivative term, which rises wicked fucking slow, but stabilizes really fast. And so you're basically combining these to, uh, to get the arm to do approximately what you want to do, because in reality the arm has mass momentum. When you're like, go to specifically like this particular degree, the momentum will cause it to overshoot, and then it will go back, and then it will go forward, and then it will go back. And like, that's why robots wave at you. They're just like, <laughs> um, so uh, these are ways that you slow down the robot so that it stops twitching on you. The other thing you can do, which is really derp, is what your thermostat does. It's just a dead band, which is the ah, oh, fuck it, close enough band. Um, and if you are lazy, that's a great way to start debugging. Um, 
The upside of doing shit like this is, uh, is if you load up the arm without any code at all, it will resist the load and continue to try to be in that position. So you can lean on it, you can push on it, and the robot will actually gear up the motors to resist you without you writing code, which is awesome. Um, but it's also the beginning of the robot resistance, so beware. Um, <laughs> All right, this is a magic fucking table from Wikipedia, so don't remember anything I said if you're really hungover. And look at this table on Wikipedia for pig controllers. And if your shit isn't doing it, increase the term that relates to the problem you're having. Um, because science is complicated, it's ass o'clock in the morning, and here we are. Um, so, velocity control. Um, so, the integral doesn't really work when you're trying to set a target velocity, so just fucking drop it, set it to zero, and then you can use the P and the D. Thank you, someone, I appreciate you. We're gonna get a lot of it. This is straight vodka. <laughs> God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. At least I had a mixer last year. All right. So uh, set the eye target to zero and then, uh, and then just set your velocity and this is like an okay way to set velocity. Um, you're going to need a feedback loop so put like maybe encoders on your wheels. Um, I don't want to go too much into stuff from last year because I know that some people saw the talk from last year but the slides are all online if you search my name and the word DEF CON. Um, ah, this is a cute adorable photo of a, of a goon's son fixing a Netgear router. Um, so this is our, our puppy photo just as we transition. Servos. Servos are limited to just one rotation. But servos have a lot of software actually already in them. Um, so like you just set a position between 0 and 255 and it just goes. It's fucking magic. There's some like physics behind it. Um, there's some applications like they aren't just interchangeable for motors. Um, but they're pretty cool. Uh, and programming servos is wicked simple. Pneumatics are cool. They use air, obviously. They're an open air system and, uh, and you can't really stop the, the pneumatic shaft halfway. Like you can spend a lot of money and they have special ones with like magnetic positions that are between open and closed. But like you and me and mere mortals, like pneumatics are up or the down and that's just how they are. Um, you need a pump on there or you need a big reserve tank and if you run out of the reserve tank then that's, sorry guys. Um, then that's, uh, then that, then your pneumatics don't work anymore. And, uh, if you decide to put a pump on there, then you really round and, uh, and your battery life goes in the toilet. Um, consider that. Um, hydraulics are so fucking messy when you break them. Uh, so, <laughs> have fun. Um, but the good thing about it is an inch of non-compressible fluid equals an inch of movement and you have much more granular control. Um, and it is a closed system. You can't just pump it out in the air and then pull more in and expect it. You're going to carry the entirety of your hydraulic fluid with you, the entirety of your whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, ah, this is Casey's crotch. Um, <laughs> so, cool trick. Um, not involving Casey's crotch. Um, <laughs> Cool trick is, uh, is, so let's say that you're debugging an infrared circuit and you're like, does it work? I don't fucking know. Um, and you can really smash your head against the wall with this. Um, most camera phones don't have a good IR filter on them because they're not like, yeah, with like the sunglasses. Um, so you can hold up the circuit that when you think it should be lit with your camera phone and see if the circuit is blinking. Um, and this is like, a, cause you, I mean most of us carry camera phones in our pockets. This is a really easy way to debug an infrared circuit before like, you know, my sensors aren't working. Is like, is the thing even lighting up? Um, check that your camera phone is shit and doesn't have an IR filter before you get angry. Um, a great way to do this is I tested this last night is those little um, derpy keyboards on that, on that TV thing in the Rio hotel rooms. Those work on infrared. TV remotes work on infrared. All kinds of shit works on infrared. You can even just put the, put the, um, put a LED into, you know, into a, a bench power supply with a resistor and just light that shit up. But, um, but do check because camera phones are getting better and better and better and better and they're starting to introduce IR filters and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So, uh, <laughs> So, cool debugging trick. This is a polar bear. It's 
so cute. Ah, oh, that vodka. Ah, oh. <laughs> fuck it. That's still straight vodka. Corrections from last year. This is some shit I did wrong. Threaded bolts. How do they work? Wrong. <laughs> okay. This, you're just gonna rip the head off the bolt or rip the, um, oh my god, I forgot this word last year too. What's the twirlies? Threads. Yeah. All right. You're gonna rip the threads off your bolt and that would suck. Don't do that. This is a machine that does nothing but bend bolts. <laughs> Don't do this either! This is sometimes actually okay if you go out and buy expensive special bolts that are made for sheer loads. They do make them. Thank you to all you lovely people who sent me angry emails. Now I've corrected it. Awesome! This is still the right way in general, as you're actually not, um, relying on the bolts for the holding force, but instead holding two pieces of metal together and relying on the static friction to be your primary holding force, because bolts are zinc-plated shits. Um, and you don't want to rely on them. Four bar linkages, these things are pimp. Um, so let's imagine that, like, you just can't mount a big ass pneumatic on the front where it's gonna run into everybody, but you need things to go up and around and back. So what you can actually do is imagine you're either driving the orange linkage or you put a motor on the orange bolt and you're actually getting a very complicated, uh, motion out of that little red ball at the top that normally wouldn't be possible without a lot of fucking effort. Uh, does everyone understand this slide? Yay! So if you wanted to make a motion like this, you would be like, holy balls, I need two motors with two dimensions and a lot of code to make sure it never goes out of these things because I want my little red thing on the top to go exactly this track and I go, wrong, bitches! Check that shit out! <laughs> Four bar linkages are amazing! Like steampunk kids shit themselves over this. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, these things are really awesome and there's all kinds of shit you can do here. Here you're transferring, if you assume that that circle represents a motor that's driving that around, you're translating a like pretty rotational motion into a semi-linear motion. That's really pimp. Linear motions are hard shit. I hate pneumatics. I hate hydraulics. They're messy and they're awful and they're and like, just like this is amazing. Like I could do a whole like 50 minutes on four bar linkages and you guys should go look this shit up on Wikipedia and a bunch of mathematicians went in there and made that look like intimidating shit, but it's not. Um, if nothing else, we like we never did math for ours. We would always just take out cardboard and push pins and just be like, is it working now? Like, you know. <laughs> and once you get it right, you just fab it out in metal. Like, you know. But so think about this. Before you start doing, if you have a, a motion, uh, and also you can change orientations here. So like let's say you have like, I'm a little claw here. I'm a little claw here. Okay. Um, and you want to go here and then you want it to be up here and rotated, you can also do rotations by, by, by having this part of the claw, a bolt here and a bolt here, you can have like the claw like rotate as part of it. It's really cool. If you're really a baller, you can have, you can make a curve which hits any three points of your choosing, but two points of your choosing is so easy. I do not want to see anyone having like soft coated like things anymore that are like, when it gets to this position, stop, when it gets to this position, stop for a motor. That's awful. That's, that's bad. Use, use a four bar linkage, use what you have. Um, also, this is a great way to gear down a motor because the arms are long and long arms are levers and that's lazy ass gearing. Awesome. <laughs> this is a bearing. Um, so, <laughs> I'm so ashamed to have to go through this, guys. You don't even know. But, um, so when you ha want to have one thing, uh, a, a rotating thing and a non rotating thing, or two rotating things that are independent, don't just fucking drill a hole and put a bolt in it. Because <laughs> friction exists. Okay, guys, like this is the ball bearing. You buy them from the internet, especially if there's any significant torque. Uh, they're really dead simple. This is the. 
This is a fucking blank slide. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, well. And thank you for donating. I'm out of vodka. Sorry, guys. If anyone's got any more, it's right there. Um, so, bushings are the lazy ass bearings. Um, it's just a low friction piece of metal um, that you use and they just rub up against each other. But they're less rubby than doing like just flat out like aluminum on aluminum like Aah! Like don't, no, please, please, baby Jesus cries. All right, thinking things through the whole way. All right, so not all plastics play together nicely. This is Loctite with a non-compatible plastic. This was my friend's senior project. It was so funny. Um, <laughs> so when you're, when you're gluing plastics or when you're or, uh, Loctite, we're going to count that in as a kind of glue. Check that your, your plastics are compatible. Um, there's lots of data sheets on this. You will not derive it empirically. You will look it up online. Um, <laughs> unless you are crazier than me, and that's fucking impressive. Um, gearboxes versus momentum. If anyone driven a manual car will know if you're going with your autonomous code 100% forward and then 100% backward, that's going to be some funny shit. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> give yourself, like, the difference between uh, theory and reality is much smaller in theory than it is in reality. Give yourself a little room for momentum and shit and Murphy's Law. Uh, this is sad robot going backwards while it's leaning forwards. Oh, don't push robot. Don't push him because you know what? You use your battery to power your computer to tell your motors to rotate forward and when you ro push your motors, fo you push your robot forward, the motors rotate and then feed current back into your very expensive computer. And then you're sad. <laughs> Please, no. Um, this is so easy to fix. You can have diodes, you can have cutoffs. Oh, hello, what are you doing here? Um, you can have diodes, you can have cutoffs, you can have tons of ways. Uh, you can have even a little shitty disengage that just unplugs the, like, just a little, you know, like jackknife switch that just unplugs the motors from the rest of the things, but please think about this. Um, I have seen too much expensive shit die uh, due to people not thinking about this because, you know, robots are heavy and you don't want to carry them because you're lazy like me. All right, acknowledgments. I didn't have to learn all of this the hard way. My mentors when I was in high school and retarded, I'm amazed they didn't kill me. Former coworkers from NASA Ames LMR project. My very tolerant housemates. An IRC channel where I'm retarded. Hacker Dojo and my college, which is spelled or pronounced Worcester or Worcester for the locals, not Worcester. Uh, this presentation is Creative Commons by attribution, non-commercial, share alike. I am Katie Levinson. I live on the fucking internet. You should talk to me with corrections or whatever else or questions. I don't give a fuck. And save the Hacker Dojo because I love that place. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have any questions? <laughs> Sorry, man. I, I told you I talk fast. Okay. James Watt was proud of the four bar linkage that transmitted the steam engine's motion in a circular motion. All right, so I'm going to repeat what that man said. Is James Watt was more proud of the four bar linkage than the fact than the entire steam engine. That's baller. Thank you for that history. Ah, Jesus. So this is a dirty secret is mechanical engineers think MATLAB is software. And that's a really unfortunate thing. So while MATLAB sucks a giant dick, all of the libraries that you want are actually made out in MATLAB and provided by universities. So it, it, it kind of sucks, but like being lazy is awesome. So I don't know if you want to choose to bite the bullet or what. But that's about your options. 
Anybody else? It's like electrical engineers think C is the only programming language, which, you know, C is an awesome programming language, but they're like, I know C. I'll do whatever the fuck this is in C. Fuck, all right, FPA, FPGA is in C. It doesn't matter. I know C. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's how the card's dealt. Anybody else got questions? Hey, Katie. Hi, Elliot. Thank you. <laughs> now I got to see Elliot at this conference. That's awesome. Anybody else got a question? What do you do with your robots? I take over the world. Uh, no. Um, so I uh, I make like hobby shit. Um, most of what I did was I worked on a lunar rover at NASA, pro uh, lunar rover prototype at NASA. Um, unfortunately, President Obama was like, fuck the moon. This is actually a really good story because um, President Bush was like, man, what do popular presidents do? I know, I'm going to challenge uh, India and China to a space race. We was like, hey, bitches, we're going to the moon in 2020 and we're going to Mars in 2030. And they called NASA and was like, guess what I did? Um, <laughs> And NASA was like, well, you're going to foot the bill for that? And he's like, fuck no, you figure it out. Uh, <laughs> and so everything, it, so everyone's like, why does NASA suck now? It's because NASA was pretty much like, we can't do this. And Bush is like, I don't know what I'd keep you around for if you can't even go back to the moon. You did that shit in the 70s. Um, and so, uh, and so, and so, Basically, they had to throw every project under the bus to try to get back to the moon in 2020, and then Obama's like, what the fuck are we doing here? And then uh, in 2009, he canceled Project Constellation, and that was all the layoffs. Um, they minimize the like, oh, there were only so many layoffs, but like they don't, they don't count all the payload teams. They only count the teams doing the rockets. And so that was unfortunately the end of my adorable lunar rover. Um, which is so cute. It was like 10 kilograms and I hold it in my arms. It was so cute. Um, but yeah, any other questions? I, I got a question. Yep. Where, where'd you get that cool hat? I found it in my hotel room. <laughs> I don't even know. I just found it this morning. I just go with my fancy ass dress. I love Vegas. <laughs> Next question. Going once. Going twice. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Oh, okay. Sure. What do you want to know? It was so cute. Sorry, what? <laughs> so it was meant as a um, as a scouting mission um, because, like, so the moon's such a bitch. Like, it's it's really ridiculous. Like, basically, the surface of the moon is like it gets hot and cooks all this shit together, and then. Uh, and then these meteors come in and they bang it up and then they break it all up into itty bitty bits and then you have like these razor sharp things that stick to you with the same mechanism as Velcro does and they, they hold electrostatic charge and then like they'll discharge electronic static charge all over you and they'll also hold radiation and dump that all over you and uh, a, a day is, is 28 days on the moon so like you have a, a, a what's that, math? I'm drunk. Um, so that's like a 14 day day and a 14 day night. So the temperature swing is ridiculous. No one actually, I know that everyone's like, oh, we put a buggy on the moon. But like no one has actually put a long term mission on the moon because the moon is so crazy. We put our movers, rovers on Mars. The only one that's ever put a, a, a rover on the moon is the Russians. And they put like tank on there. Like, the Lunacroft was crazy. So, like, it's actually amazing how little we've spent on the surface of the moon because the surface of the moon is crazy. So, this was a little shitty scouting mission. Um, it basically had a camera in the front and the goal was just to drive that fucker until the sun cooked it. Um, <laughs> Uh, because the, the, the surface, like, if you can imagine the temperature switch during a 14 day day with no atmosphere and nothing to protect you, it's ridiculous. Like, the, if you look at the, um, at the original, um, lunar, um, extra outside of the mission drivey buggy shit, um, they used piano wires on the wheels because they couldn't use rubber because it would boil. 
holy balls, they couldn't use metal because the first rock would pull it up. So they actually took piano wire and tuned it around and then they let the rocks get absorbed up into the piano wire and then like the, uh, and then the, the rocks would just fall out later. Like the, the science, like it's so crazy. Like I understand why Mars is so important and so awesome and someplace we might actually live someday, but like the moon is such an ultimate engineering challenge. I think that people really underestimate the moon because of the distance involved, um, but the moon is such an awesome engineering challenge for thermal engineers, for mechanical engineers. I mean, basically, on a lunar mission, software is the, like, we'll fix it in software and support team. Um, we clean up everybody else's messes. Like, someone wanted me to overclock and underclock the processor to function as a heater. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> We are so secondary, it's not even fucking funny. <laughs> like, it's very, very humbling to realize that, like, despite the fact that you have to have a mathematically foolproof system, you are not the one holding the hard challenges on this team. Uh, and that's an incredibly humbling experience. I'm sorry, I don't even remember what your original question was. Did I answer it? <laughs> Any other questions? Can you tell us some stories of epic fail? Oh my god, I can tell you so many stories of epic fail. So one time, I know I put this in last year, but it's so good. So like one time, uh, I, I, we were making a robot, and it was two nights before the ship date, because this was for a competition, where they take away the robot. And, uh, and so, we were just testing the robot and you know, the battery is whatever, like you know, it needs to stay in there. So we bolted it down with some metal C-clamps. That seems reasonable. And then as we were driving around, the metal C-clamps like waggled themselves out and got over the contacts and like arced it right into the steel frame. And uh, now I advise you to use Velcro on your batteries <laughs> because fire is bad. <laughs> Most important formula for robots, black plus red equals fire. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Velcro's great shit. We also, I was once on the um, Carnegie Mellon, uh, that was actually really humiliating because I graduated and I was still, like chilling with Carnegie Mellon and then my alma mater is the one that wins the half a million dollars for the Lunar X Prize. Fuck, I graduated too early. Um, and uh, so they were great. They had no suspension on the robot. They were doing a lunar regolith excavation challenge. And uh, they decided to carry the robot around because, like, I'll tell you, during, like, when, when the shit hits the, the floor or the fan or wherever it hits, um, like, people are really rough on robots. Uh, and so they dropped it into the pit where it was supposed to compete. And, uh, and the electronics board did this little flexy shit while it was live. And it did this little arcing shit. And then it didn't work as well. <laughs> when you let the magic spoke out of the computer, bad things happen. So that was bad. Um, let's see what. Oh, I ruined two walls in my high school. <laughs> I had an angry nun chase me down the hallway. Fun fact, kids, when you get out of range of your wireless, you need to have the robot stop. <laughs> when it detects it is not getting anything, it needs to stop because otherwise you will have no way to bring it back. This is really important if anyone does UAVs. <laughs> Just putting that out there. If you lose, like, peace, like, time out, just have it start landing slowly. Or you will never get that shit back until the batteries run out and it plummets like a rock. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, goodness, I've broken so many things. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Anybody else got questions? Actually, I have a legitimate question. So, when, when will we have, and this is very appropriate, but not this particular audience, but in general, when will we have robots that we can have sex with? <laughs> so, like... That's the best most of these people get. <laughs> I know. Uh, he says that's the best most people here are getting. So, you know, the question was, when do we have robots that we can have sex with? Uh, so, that's hard question. Um, you would either have to tether it or finish fast, which I'm sure isn't a problem around here. Um, 
because right now, like the really limiting factor that's keeping robots out of our daily life is battery consumption. I actually wanted to put a slide on this, but I got too drunk. Um, so it's actually a hundred times more efficient if you're allocating about 30 pounds for uh, for for energy for your energy budget to put a uh, a a generator on there with gasoline than to put a lithium ion battery even pretending that cost wasn't a problem. Um, battery technology is really not keeping up with robots and that's why the only robots that you see right now are either domestic bullshit like the Roomba or things that, that have like a very controlled environment have the capacity to plug themselves back in or you see something that's tethered to the floor like uh, automation machinery or you see military shit and they don't care how loud it is. So unless you get turned on by a generator going <laughs> um, I would say that's one of the more serious barriers to robots in our everyday lives for sexy times or whatever else. Um, and it's really great because cell phones are now like really up against the wall in battery life and they're putting a lot of money behind this. On the other hand, I cried inside when I saw the Apple and they were like, like Apple has so much money and they're like, oh my god guys, we made it so much better by making the battery bigger and I'm like, no, make me a better battery, I want robots everywhere. So if any of you happen to be billionaires that want to be like ph philanthropists and don't want to give it to the hacker dojo, um, and, uh, and, and want to make the world a better place, I would say that the place where you can really make a difference is by improving battery technology because that's what's really holding us back from the robotic revolution. Is it's just not energy efficient and people don't want generators and horrible gas smells and the rat noise in their house. Um, I go off topic a lot. What's up dude? What are your thoughts on self-driving cars? Baller. <laughs> my thoughts on sorry, my thoughts on self-driving cars is they are baller. They are an example of a gas-fueled engine, um, as previously stated. They're amazing. Um, I really hope that they get good at what they're doing before the legislature goes, "Oh fuck, guys, we have to stop this." Um, they're really cool. On the other hand, I'm really sad because Google's solution to uh, to running a uh, to running uh, a, a self-driving car is to be like, we're going to take a $30,000 car and strap a $70,000 LiDAR on the top. This is scalable shit. It's like, fuck no, I'll buy a Tesla for $100,000. <laughs> like, um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, LiDARs coming down in cost and I believe it can be done. I believe the technology is out there. The problem is the only place we're selling LiDARs right now is to the military and as you know, the military gives fuck all about the price. Um, so I really want to see commercial LiDARs because I believe that that is what will hasten self-driving cars into the reality that you and I live with. By the way, I'm really not good about the future. I, I love these questions, but like, like, I'm as much of an expert as this microphone makes me. Um, so please take me with a grain of salt. I'll give you my best effort. What's up? Um, so, uh, what languages do I like to program in for robotics? I would say uh, the big on. So, there's the robots are really divided into. Uh, as I said before, batteries are really a limiting factor on robotics, and so energy consumption is serious shit. Um, and you actually look at like the like the like the 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 computers we have on robots, and they're awful. So there's usually actually two computers that are seriously involved. One is the embedded system on the robot itself which is extremely bare bones, extremely power sensitive and that is all embedded C. And then you have the off board computation that does like uh, sensing, cause like I mean fuck, off board you can plug it into a wall, fuck electricity, like this shit is easy. Um, so that is written in a variety of languages. Um, there are excellent libraries for Python, excellent Python support. Um, Another friend who's doing amazing work, uh, if you think I'm good at robots, this man I think will be the next father of modern robotics. Um, and his name is Kevin Harrington and he works at neuronrobotics.com. They have phenomenal Python libraries. Um, there are a lot of good Python libraries. A lot of it depends on OpenCV. OpenCV is varied um, if you want to do vision stuff. Um, I would say embedded C and embedded Python for the, for the uh, off-board computing side are probably the general tools of choice. 
although I've seen everything because robots is such a new field like Microsoft made this like embedded crazy robot shit I don't know if anyone's going to use it but like everyone's trying to get into being the operating system of modern robotics which is bullshit until we get batteries you don't have fucking room to run an operating system fuck when I ran a rover we didn't have virtual memory fuck that shit like operating system modern robotics until we get proper batteries on there is a joke and everyone will hate me for saying that but fuck them because I'm right <laughs> Um, <laughs> next question. What's up? Can you shout a little louder? Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, Neuro Robotics has one. Willow Garage is trying RTOS. A for effort. Um, Sorry, Ross, not Artos. Artos is something different. Ross, thank you, sir. Uh, is trying Ross A for effort, not sure on the implementation. They assume that you have this like magical infinite battery life, but they are shiny. And when the battery industry catches up, they'll be kind of hot. I don't know if they'll be outdated before then. Um, I OpenCV is baller. It's actually used by a much broader compute uh, community, including general com uh, computer vision. Um, I can definitely answer that question better by posting something online. So if you ping me at Katie Levinson on Twitter, uh, I'll put up, I'll, I'll go actually research this question and have an answer that's not pulled out of my ass, if that's cool with you. Next question, what's up, dude? Not intensively. You mean the arm? Uh, he asked, is there a robot on, on the International Space Station? Are you familiar with that? Let me, are you meaning the arms or what? Yeah, I don't know shit about that. Sorry, dude. Make it up. Assholes make shit up, man. I'm not going to make shit up. I'm going to give you my best educated guess. And uh, I mean, I think that's the only way to keep respect is, is, is you say when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. What's up, dude? What kind of programming languages and design strategies go into Lunar Rover? So this is actually really complicated shit um, because uh, NASA is obsessed with flight heritage, um, which means like, fuck the risk, someone else flew it. They obviously did their homework. It's like conference papers. It's like, I'm qualified to speak this conference because the people who spoke at the conference before think I'm qualified. Um, not this conference, I mean like bullshit conferences. Um, so, uh, cause this one the goons decide and they didn't, I mean, they don't talk. But, uh, so, uh, so it is complicated. Um, people use VXWorks, which is, I have nightmares about VXWorks. I really hate that system. Um, and they also use it on your, uh, on your wireless modems and oh, those work so well. Uh, I'm never getting a job from them. Fuck them, I don't want to work for them. Uh, so, there was a uh, there was a low Earth orbit, and that's so. There's a di big dif differentiation between low Earth orbit and higher Earth orbit because the Van Allen belt is like pew radiation. You're fucked because like imagine that like when you're designing your programming system, any bit can be flipped. Like your stat counter, oh I just changed that. Oh your your PC counter, oh I just changed that, and they expect you to design around that, and it's like fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so, uh, but, so VXWorks is what the, uh, is what Spirit and Opportunity run, is what a lot of the computers run. Um, I mean, Rad Hardened computers are a joke. Rad Hardened computers is a really hard thing because, uh, anything that can go into space can be used as an intercontinental missile and the military gets all up in that shit. Um, because they don't like intercontinental missiles. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> so, but if, like, if you want to buy, like, a, a computer that has, like, less power than my cell phone, um, it's generally, like, $20,000 for the uh, motherboard, $20,000 for the IO board, $10,000 for the power board, uh, and that's for the prototype, and then they'll sell you a, uh, a one that's guaranteed to be exactly like the one you're going to ship into space, and that's 40,000 for the motherboard, 40,000 for the IO board, and 20,000 for the power board and then if you want to actually ship one to space they'll sell you one for 80, 80 and 40 and that one comes in a magic plastic bag and if you don't open it in the clean room and you don't do the magic voodoo and it breaks, they're not fucking liable. Um, defense, I mean like this is getting into my political belief but defense contractors have gutted the American public's uh, capacity to do science 
with their hardware. And it's, it's really frustrating. And I'm sure that many people in the audience hate me for saying that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's the nature of things, um, I feel. Are, we, uh, are you throwing me off? I will not throw you. I will gently take you. All right. Thank you so much. You guys have been awesome.